Some El Paso area school districts are having to deal with budget woes and falling enrollment. CBS4 Mornings anchor Fidel Moreno Mesa explored the possibility of consolidating local school districts and how it could impact the local economy in this special report. You may be wondering what exactly is a district consolidation. Well, a consolidation happens when two or more school districts merge, creating one single district. For example, if Canutillo ISD and Anthony ISD were to merge with El Paso ISD, or if Clint ISD, Fabens ISD, and San Elisario ISD all merged with the Socorro Independent School District. Now, it is important to note that these are simply examples and not actual ideas. I spoke with one local economics professor on the positives and negatives of consolidation. Currently, all nine of our local school districts have their own superintendents, along with several executive cabinet members who typically earn the highest salaries in districts. One local economics professor says one of the benefits of consolidation is less administrative staff. You wouldn't have two VPs, but you would have to have a different structure which would eliminate some positions and those positions they could go back into teaching or maybe other uh, administrative levels. Texas law says consolidations can happen one of two ways, either by the Board of Trustees or a petition by voters requesting an election on the matter. That petition must be signed by a required number of registered voters in the district. Aguilar says that while there isn't any concrete research that unified districts are better than independent school districts, Texas does have a problem. Texas has a problem with many school districts because of urban sprawl and because every time there's a big development, there's a new school district that's uh, laid out. Unified districts are not necessarily a new thing. Aguilar says that they exist in several other states. L.A. has had a unified school district for many, many years, and it seems to work well. San Diego has a unified school district that works rather well. Phoenix has a unified school district for schools K through 12 in some areas of Phoenix. So what they're seeing there the way I'm looking at it, they see the, 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 the cost benefit. Among the other benefits of unified districts are fewer facilities, meaning lower maintenance costs. And while the positives do exist, Aguilar says there could be downsides to forming larger districts. The span of control has now widened, and now the taxpayer doesn't have access to the board members of the school district like we do with the small school districts that we have now. Consolidations in the state of Texas are rare. In the last 10 years, there have been a total of three consolidations. One of those was Roxton ISD, a small district in northeast Texas. I spoke with one of the former board members on their decision to consolidate. Our consolidation really happened because of the, uh, well, the loss of students. We are kind of centered between two larger school districts. There were a couple of uh, classes that we watched all the way from elementary that they just never grew. McGuire adds that academically and financially, the district was fine, but when programs began to suffer due to enrollment, they knew they should consider consolidating. You know, we didn't have enough girls to play basketball. So, you know, we didn't have a girls basketball team at one at one point. Uh, we didn't have, you know, we, we historically had, <clears throat> excuse me, had softball and track and those things. And some of those programs started to fall off. McGuire says the decision was a tough one, but that four years later, he knows they made the right choice by consolidating. You know, of course, we, we didn't want to do it, but, uh, you know, when, when finances change and, uh, you know, you don't have, uh, you have to have, you have to have kids in seats to, to run a school. You know, we had to kind of lay that pride aside and do what was right for, for our kids. As for what consolidation looked like for Roxton ISD, McGuire says it was lots of conversations in the boardroom, meetings with teachers and town halls before they made their final decision. We did reach out to Chisholm ISC, the district that Roxton consolidated with, to learn about the state of the district, but did not hear back in time for this report. I also do want to reiterate that consolidation is not currently a discussion happening here in the El Paso area. We simply used El Paso area districts as examples. Fidel Moreno Mesa, CBS. Four at 10.